Hi guys, this is Huck. Um, this is going to be the third vlog I think I've done. I've become pretty inconsistent with the timing on them, but I'm going to try to be more consistent going into the future. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is, well, the general subject I'm going to talk about is NA versus EU scene as far as tournaments going. Uh, just today, um, there was a tournament I knew about, but it finished, completed today, uh, that Nanawa one, that was worth um, $20,000 for first place, I think. And I think the grand total was something like 30k, and it was like four players. Four players being some guy with a Z name, Maro, who won something in 2010. Uh, I, I am Cologne, he won. And Bishu, who is a Protoss player, Swedish. They're all Swedish players because it was a Swedish tournament. As you can see, it's a pretty good tournament for, I think, $30,000 USD total, 20k going to first. 7 something going to 2nd and 3 something going to 3rd. You know, we have other big tournaments like Red Bull and DreamHack winner and stuff, but that's with like a player pool that is huge and you have to go through a lot of people and it's really tough. So, I've been pretty outspoken with uh, how lacking the US slash Canada NA scene is as far as tournaments. Uh, just today, I think we have a Lake Charles event, which is like one of the few LAN tournaments in the US and even that it has uh, Apocalypse, the Korean that's played in WCS America, Sage, even that tournament would probably be considered harder than the other tournament that Nanawa just won. And I'm not hating on Nanawa. If I was Nanawa, I'd be playing in this tournament too. Maro, Bishu, or the other guy, I would definitely be playing in the tournament. But I just want to go over the fact that it's really sucky for uh, the US and Canadian participants because even uh, Germany and Spain, they have like EPS or whatever. Sweden also has many other only Swedish tournaments run by DreamHack or uh, different organizations. There's the even weekly online tournaments that happen that are either EU server or strictly EU. I know for example TLO for an example has won a lot a lot of euros off the I think it's Kropensky or something cup. I'm not sure if it's EU only but it's only EU server I'm pretty sure and then just the Fragbyte tournament that Stardust just won, also an EU online tournament. There's just a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of tournaments in the EU compared to the US slash Canada. Uh, even Major just won uh, Dirt. He forfeited Shoutcraft because he was at a LAN event and the lag was too much apparently. But he forfeited Shoutcraft, which was I think 2.5k for first, and he won $8,000 in some Mexico event only. Like a week or two before that he won some other South American tournament, uh, Copa America or something, which was worth, uh, you know, some n thousands of dollars or something. First of all, I just want to talk about how it was pretty big shame that the Muslim and Major forfeited. It definitely shouldn't have happened for either player. I think both of them should have uh, participated and played. So let's, let's just get into the issues. Not only that EU has more tournaments, but the fact that EU has you know, arguably better players in general than in the NA scene, more players, just comes down to lifestyle things, uh, social and economic factors. It's a lot easier for a European player to go to school, stop going to school, take, you know, one, two, three years off, and then go pro gaming, or try to become a pro gamer if they're good enough, and then go back to school. Just because of the different social programs they have, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, they can help support themselves meanwhile so they don't have to like quit school get a job then try to be a pro gamer but uh, they have a lot of social programs and better you know healthcare and welfare and that kind of stuff I think these these factors definitely uh, tribute to the fact that there's more consistent European players uh, more pro European players and it's easier for them just to become pro players by these factors it's definitely something I feel like the U.S. and Canada are lacking. Canada being a little bit better just with healthcare, and I think welfare is probably a little bit better. Other than that, they have a lot of support also from their government as far as tournaments, like the Swedish tournament that Danawa just won um, is actually, I think, directly supported by the government, either the tournament that ran it or whatever, where it's just the government is actually helping promote Esports. I don't think they know they're directly promoting this specific event, but they definitely put money towards uh, fostering uh, youth playing games and you know helping children have fun and you know whatever bonding experiences and stuff like that. And we just don't have that in the U.S., which isn't you know you can't blame the Europeans for that. That's that's awesome. 
that's what the U.S. has. I'm just pointing out the differences and um, hope, hoping to wear, uh, to increase awareness about it and hopefully, you know, sometime in the future it would be possible for us to push towards something like that because uh, I think Robert Olin posted on Twitter that it's amazing, like, a lot of the developers, a lot of the games like Blizzard uh, companies, they originate from the U.S., but we don't have the support that, you know, the Europeans have or even, like, Mexico and South America, they have a lot of tournaments that uh, are helped by Blizzard or helped by anything, and it's just, it's it's sucky, and I hope that hopefully, hope, 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 that we can push towards making a better scene for the U.S. and Canada, and making it not only, like, more viable to be a pro gamer, but make it worthwhile tournaments, like, you know, weekly events, monthly events, whatever. I know for a fact that myself, I got out of high school, and uh, I wanted to go to school, but I couldn't afford it, and I couldn't risk getting into like a large amount of debt just to go to school. So I, I was in the process of joining the military when I became a programmer, just so I could go to the go to school in the future for free or close close to free as possible. Where uh, you know a lot of our European programmers, you know, you you just take a year off, take two years off, go back to school, and the government's going to support you in those kind of ways. So that was a pretty long rant, but I think it's all kind of connected because. We are getting a little bit more help. I know uh, Rob Simpson at Red Bull, you know, he held NA only qualifiers, which is like a step in the right direction, but pretty much every tournament does that. And I think the little land qualifier was a decent amount of money too. I think it might have been like two to three K that Scarlet won and got an invite to the Red Bull tournament, but it pales in comparison to some of these other events that, you know, Germany, Spain, Sweden, uh, whatever are holding that are just lots of money, it's only nationals, you know, there's no Koreans there, it's small tournaments. I mean, even the qualifier, I think, for the Swedish event that was just held, first place was like, for the just the qualifier, if you won the qualifier, you get to play in the tournament, that's only four players for 30k, but you also won, I think, like four to 5k USD, which is like an MLG, that's like my MLG Orlando win, so uh, it's it's really supportive. I really want to just thank um, people like Total Biscuit and uh, Ting for supporting the NA scene. Rob Simpson, you know, trying to hold at least NA only qualifiers. I really appreciate that. There are some people that are pushing, trying to push the NA scene. I think in general, we just don't see as many pro gamers in the NA scene. I mean, there's a lot of people in Root, I know specifically, that have fought with the fought against themselves of like, should I go to school? Should I get a job? Am I going to continue being like a pro gamer? Because there's people like Minigun, who's like a really good NA pro toss. I feel like he's constantly questioning whether he should stick with it because he's pretty good. He's made WCS Premier League before, but he doesn't get like a shit ton of viewers. He hasn't won any major events. He's just like bleeding out money, bleeding out time. And you know, when he's done pro gaming and whatever, a year or two, three years, whatever, however long he sticks with it, What's he gonna do? He can't go to school. He can't like apply to a job and put on resume as a pro gamer. I mean, he can, but it's not gonna be like a great life skill. Where I know for a fact that Thorzane, for example, uh, is going to school now. They just have like a test that you can take, basically. So you take a test, study for this test, right? And if you're smart enough and you do well enough on this one test, they can just accept you for whatever program. And I think he's on his way to become a doctor. And then he's gonna be supported by the government to do this. So even though he stop did whatever kind of programming kind of not doing it part-time he's got that support behind him and a players just don't have that choice we're like either all in on this or we're not all in on this and if you fuck up you fucked up your life there's not a lot of options other than that and you know unless you come from money you, you know you could really be screwing yourself anyways that's the longest rant ever for this vlog so big shout out to shellcraft Red Bull, keep pushing it. I hope more people get behind it. Moving on to the next thing, we got a lot of stuff going on. ATC finals, I'm really hyped for that. Scarlet Nanawa Bitcoin tournament, once again run by Total Biscuit. Uh, really sick event. Of course, me being envious, I think it was announced right after I won Shotcraft, and I was like, man, I wish I, like, I could have played in that, but they definitely deserve it. Two best foreigners this year, by far. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a great event. Hopefully they produce some really good games. For myself, I've just been chilling. This last week I've been playing Hearthstone, Left for Dead with some friends. Just been chilling, exercising, trying to get healthy and to continue doing that. Uh, I just started practicing again today. It's been really tough. I've been losing a lot. It's like you take a week off of StarCraft and you struggle <laughs> really hard. It's 
not fun. But uh, getting back in shape just for like two or three days so I can qualify for IEM at the end of next month. I will be going home to Canada in, uh, at the end of this month for New Year's and I'll be spending Christmas in New York with some friends and my girlfriend. That's about it. Um, so let me show you guys what I got. I don't know if you can see this. This is the trophy. Pretty sick trophy. I'm going to get close right here. Oh yeah. Once again, thank you. Uh, I know I was supposed to do a picture or something, but I figured this would be better. Thank you to Jenna and TB. I really appreciate it. Um, it also just shows that they want it. You know, not only just money, they want to, you know, this is, this is a really nice trophy. So I want to thank them. And I hope you guys continue to support the NA scene. I hope you guys have a good holiday. I'll probably try to do more vlogs before, you know, the end of this month or whatever, just to update you on IEM and how I did and that kind of stuff. I really appreciate everything. It made me, winning Shellcraft, even though it's not, you know, dream hack winner or anything it made me realize that as long as i have my fans supporting me i can continue being a pro gamer no matter what so uh, i really appreciate it thank you everybody uh, safe holidays have fun get fat eat lots of food and that's it see you